this video is going to build on the previous video. Uh, we extruded this uh, part, simple part, and now we're going to import some fixturing. So we're going to import a basic uh, curve vice file, and we're also going to import a set of step jaws, all right, one at a time to bring them in. They are on other Mastercam files, pre-drawn. In a folder I set aside as fixtures, so I have some multi-axis fixtures in there. I have different jaws. Um, I will provide uh, via email the tooling for this example for you to import. They have their own levels, and those levels will import with the fixturing or with the other file, whatever you want to import. The key here is that I have any of my current, whatever I'm going to machine, Levels, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever, okay, up to 100. 100, 101, 102, 103, I leave for fixturing. Now, you don't have to do it that way. That's just how I have it set up. Um, just be aware that in, in order to keep it organized, it, the, the levels will import unless there's already a level existing that it will not import. Um, other things like model colors, previous geometry will be there. Uh, the other thing I want to point out now is blank will become useful because you have to have your active level on. So I want to turn all this off uh, when I import the body of the vise and stuff so I can move the vise around and then I'll bring the part to the vise. Now I already have my stock set up because I was using this file for another example, but generically I would not have any sort of toolpath set up yet. I try to do my programming in the fixturing. It's not impossible, but it just saves some steps. Uh, but being that the stock is there, I will bring my stock to that later just to show you how that's done. Um, or at least how I do it. So what I want to do is right click on blank and make it active. And you'll see now why I have blank is I can turn all of it off. All right. You can't do that if one of these is active that I'm aware of. Okay. So right now we are going to go to file and merge. And that's key. It's not import. It's merging. And you'll see I have a file and I have some fixtures. Okay. And the first thing we're going to bring in is the curve vise. And I'm going to hit open. Okay, and the curve vise is here, and you'll see it imports on the center of the uh, vise. We're mounted on like a, a rotary, not a rotary table, but a, a pivot table for the vise. That's fine. Uh, we're just going to move the vise out in space right now. So I'm going to go to dynamic. Okay, I am going to window everything. Now you see why I turned off my part. Now it's easier to move. I will take the gnomon and put it on some corner somewhere. Click the x-axis and bring it over some distance just away. Okay, because most of my other stuff is going to import right in this area, and I want the vice away. I will then hit green check and hit escape, and you'll see we have a vice. And the vice is on level 100. Okay, so kind of a smooth way to do it. It's not impossible to do other ways, but it just keeps it clean. Next thing I want to import is I'm going to import one step jaw, and then I'm going to copy it and rotate it so it'll be on the same level. Uh, so I'm going to go file, merge again, and I'm going to go to step jaw. Okay, now I have some of the stuff I use in here. I have other files. They're not, it's not on this computer right now. Um, so I will provide the Kurt Vice machine table and step jaw um, in a folder. All right, so I'm going to hit open, and you'll see one jaw. Okay. Now I will move this one jaw to the correct location right now. The key here is that you'll see I have some 2D geometry I used to cut this, or wherever I forget where I got this, or if I drew it, I don't remember. Um, so that 2D geometry must go with it. Okay, so this is all selected now. I'm going to hit dynamic. Okay, I'm going to select everything and hit enter. I'm going to take the gnomon and I'm going to go to the out center of this part of the vise. Don't go to the inside of the chamfer. It's going to set the depth wrong. If you do this correctly, um, if you select correctly, it just stays on their step. You can move wherever you want, how many times you want, but just easier this way. Now, Next step is I want to bring this over. I want to bring the whole part over. I don't want to pick one axis at a time. Okay, so if you make sure you're very careful when you do this. Select the center sphere in the middle of the gnomon. Now you have control of the movement of this. Now I can go over to the other side of the part. Click the outside of this chamfer. It'll snap the center and click. Now it's located properly. Okay, green check. Okay. Now I'm going to get out of merge uh, this uh, merge pattern. Hit escape. And we have a solid jaw. And notice the step of the step jaw is that 2D geometry. The step jaw itself is that geometry. Okay. I leave that like that. Um, again, I don't remember if, where I got this from or if I drew it. I leave that away. That way I can change the step. I don't have to have multiple step jaws. Um, it's not a bad idea to have multiple step jaws. It's just it's easy for me to modify this geometry. That's why it's out of the way there. Okay. So, again, I don't remember where I, if I got that from somewhere and I kind of liked it and left it or if I drew that. But that's what I have in the folder. 
the next step is going to be is going to be so I'm going to move this draw over, not move it, but copy it. So I'm going to use my transform tools. First thing I'm going to do, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to use rotate. I'm going to select this body, and I'm going to select the jump, this 2D geometry. Now it'll prompt you if you don't do that, but it's easier to select it now. All right, the center rotation is here. I will leave that. Okay. What I want to do is change this and turn it 180. Okay, and I want to copy it. So you'll see, there it is. Okay, which is fine. It's perfect location. What's wrong with being right there? We will then hit green check. Okay. The next step is I will use dynamic. Now dynamic really works with 3D stuff. I'm tending to use it more and more. Uh, we will go dynamic. We will select everything here and hit enter. We will select just like the other jaw. We will select the outside of this chamfer. We will select the center of the gnomon carefully. Now see, I did not select carefully. See what happens? No big deal. Just click. All right, escape, go back again, enter, very carefully, there, make sure you select the center of the gnomon, it'll highlight, okay, watch, I'll try to do it, you'll see what happens, you got a rotary, you got to the Y, the X, then you got movement in all three, click, let's bring it over, and I have some 2D geometry in the movable jaw, okay, and you'll see that it doesn't really snap the same way. You got to go right to the center and snap. There it is. We're good there. Green check. And the benefit of this is that uh, there, there's no need to merge again. Okay, so now I got the step jaws. Turn them on or off. Okay, I'll turn the steps off. Now we have our vice imported. <clears throat> okay, our next step would be is if we had a stop, we could import a stop to make sure we don't hit it. I don't have that file in there. I don't find it super necessary. Um, sometimes I will, depends. What I want to do is I want to position this part roughly 5 eighths from this edge. So I'm going to go line endpoints. I'm going to select that geometry. I'm going to go over this way, click, and type in 0.625. Now I have the line endpoint I could snap to when I move my stock. So what I want to do now is I want to turn stock reference, bowls, and solid on. Okay, I will go to transform, dynamic, I will select this entire part, I will put the gnomon on the bottom of this, okay, I will then move the part, select the center of the gnomon, and click it on the endpoint of that line. So now, this component... It's five eighths away. Again, if you import a stop or something, you could actually put that in there to see if you actually hit it in the file, which is not a bad thing. All right. Uh, so we'll leave that there. We'll ignore our stock being down there right now. Uh, we'll forget about that. For now, I'll change that in the next video. Now what I want to do is bring this jaw in. We could do a few things here, but one thing I want to show you, if we go to top view, all right, we can actually measure. So if we go to um, drafting and go to smart dimension, we can select this line and this line and drag over. And you'll see it's 1.184 away. Knowing that, we can go to transform, dynamic, this, and hit enter. We can put the gnome in pretty much anywhere, but we'll go right on that surface. Come on. Right there. We'll go to the Y. And now we'll type in minus 1.184. Enter. Then I'll hit green check. Now I always move the hard jaws first to make sure they're right. Because you could, in, in reality, you can bring this in and be crude. We won't. We'll move it 1.184 just like we did the other one. But um, it's not super critical for what we're doing with this. So I'll just take this and put it on this corner. Okay, and I'll take the Y, and I'll go minus 1.184, green check. Okay, so now we took our part and put it in the vise. All right. We have our levels, 1, 2, 3, 4 for part stuff, and 100, 101, 102 for fixturing. Okay, last thing we'll do is we will put our stock in our work coordinate system in the correct location. 
right? So to do that, I want to turn the step draw and the vice off, all right? They're off. Okay. Then I want to go to toolpaths and go to stock setup. I then want to select all solids. Now notice it selects only the solids the levels are on. Very convenient. Uh, we will hit green check. And notice our stock has moved. All right. Here we are. Okay. We can now turn our vice back on if we want. All right. Notice we're good. Last thing we need to do is move our work coordinate system. We already had a work coordinate system set up. Let's see what's in there. We had, we were just using top. So we'll do a new one. All right. So we'll go to dynamic, add a dynamic work coordinate system. We'll call it upper uh, left. All right. And I'll take the gnomon and lock it to this corner. And I will rotate around the Z, negative 180, or positive 180, it doesn't matter. Okay. And I'll set that as a WSS T plane and C plane, and hit green check. All right, enter and green check, sorry. And we're good. So now we are all set. This is definitely a good time to save. All right. I'm just saving this for video as I go through this with you. Now we're ready to roll. Okay. So after this, we will machine this part and I'll show you that. It'll be quick. And then we need to set it up and um, we'll get it ready. I'll show you some collision detection because we do have a problem with this part. And that problem is that we are going to drill and hit that step draw. And that's on purpose. I want to show you how to set up for collision detection. All right. So hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video.